If there is a Republican president, Democrats tend to pick up seats in the House and in the Senate in the midterm elections. If there's a Democratic president, Republicans tend to pick up seats in Congress in the midterm elections. It's just a general rule of American politics. If the pendulum has swung in one direction in the past election, Americans tend to like to swing it back a little bit. And so, yes, in 2008, Democrats ran the table. They won the presidency. They added 20 plus seats to their majority in the House. They added eight more seats to their majority in the Senate. But after the pendulum swung that far toward the Democrats in 08, in the next election in 2010, it swung back hard. The Democrats in 2010 lost six of those seats in the Senate. They lost their majority in the House. And in the states, 2010 was a Democratic disaster. Democrats lost more legislative seats in the states than at any time since the 1920s in that election. In all of these states marked here, Republicans picked up the governorships. A dozen states. It was just a coast-to-coast -coast Republican route in 2010. Almost. In 2010, New York State was in kind of a weird position. New York had had its first Democratic governor in 12 years, but he had had to resign in a hooker scandal, which surprised everybody. This was the first Democrat to have that job in more than a decade, and curse Platt. He quit, his lieutenant governor took over to serve out the rest of the term, but when it came time to defend the seat in November 2010, the lieutenant governor decided he wasn't going to run for it. So yeah, New York, blue state, but New Yorkers had kind of gotten used to a Republican in the state house for a long time. When Democrats finally got their chance at it, they blew it, so to speak. So 2010 elections, it's gonna be a huge Republican year nationwide. New York Democrats lost their first governor to a hooker scandal and their second governor to dropping out. And that election in New York state, November 2010, that was gonna be a tough election or not. On paper, Democrats should have had trouble there, but look, they won the governor's race by 30 points. Even in 2010, that huge Republican year. And that huge margin, that huge election for the Democrats is in part because Andrew Cuomo was a good Democratic candidate, but let's not kid ourselves. That, including the 30 point margin, was also because this was the guy he was running against. If we've learned anything tonight, it's that New Yorkers are as mad as hell, and we're not gonna take it anymore. That was Carl Palladino's victory speech the night he was nominated by New York Republicans to run in what is the strangest governor's race in the country right now. Despite winning, Mr. Palladino was angry about something and he wants you to share in it, delight in it, swim in that anger until you're all nice and pruney. You think he wants you to get off his lawn? Not crazy Carl. He wants his anger on your lawn. This is a lawn sign. I'm mad too, Carl. Very, very mad. Before Mr. Palladino was nominated by New York Republicans, the thing that had a lot of people angry at Carl Palladino was his super racist email forwarding habit. It wasn't just the one where the president and first lady were photoshopped as pimp and prostitute. It was also the one with the chimps doing the river dance labeled proof the Irish discovered Africa. Huh. That wasn't the last trash that Mr. Palladino would circulate. After he was nominated, his campaign sent out a mailer, which again, we have in our possession, um, that literally smells like trash, sent to 200,000 New Yorkers. He's going to clean things up, see? Perhaps starting with your mailbox, when a week after he sent that to you, you still had the scent of garbage stinking up your Sports Illustrated. That is who the Republican Party ran for governor in New York State in 2010. And that is in part why the Democratic candidate won that race by 30 points. That was a really Republican year. Can you imagine what it would have been like if Carl Palladino had won that race with the trash mailers and the racist emails and the calling President Obama a pimp and the whole, like, can you imagine if a guy like that had actually ended up being governor of a U.S. state? Oh, say hello to the governor of Maine. Not Carl Palladino, but if you squint, you could be forgiven for mixing them up. In the great state of Maine, they're now living out that future that New Yorkers narrowly avoided for themselves in 2010 when Carl Palladino didn't win. The Bangor Daily News keeps a running tally of just the things that Governor Paul LePage says that embarrass himself and the state. Not even the stuff he does, just the stuff he says, like telling the NAACP that they should kiss his butt, like contributing this scientific wisdom in arguing for chemicals in baby bottles. Take a plastic bottle, put it in a microwave, and then heat it up. It gives off a chemical that's similar to estrogen. And um, so, I mean, the worst case is some women might have little beards, but we don't want to do that. 
Then there was yesterday when he said about a Democratic state senator who is a logger by trade that people like him, they ought to go back into the woods and cut trees and let somebody with a brain come down here and do some work. That took a, ought to go over well with the blue collar vote in Maine. Uh, then he finished that same rant with punctuation of a real Carl Paladino variety, so much so that reporting on it last night on Maine's local newscasts had to come with a warning. We're about to put on screen what the governor said in response, and some of our viewers who may find it distasteful may want to hit the mute button and turn away for the next 20 seconds or so. The governor told the reporters, Senator Jackson claims to be for the people, but he's the first one to give it to the people without providing Vaseline. When he was asked if he realized some people may find that comment offensive, he's reported to have said, good, it ought to, because I've been taking it for two years. Again, the quote here is, He's the first one to give it to the people without providing Vaseline. This is how the local NBC affiliate Channel 6 in Maine had to headline their online version of the story. LePage uses sexually vulgar phrase to describe actions of legislative opponent. As, Por uh, as Portland Press Herald columnist Bill Nemitz noted today, little tykes all over Maine are asking right about now, Mommy, how come Governor LePage is talking about Vaseline? This is a unique varietal of Republican politician right now. You know, it's sending out racist bestiality porn videos and cartoons of the president in New York State, and it's refusing to apologize for your violent lube references in Maine. And yeah, Carl Paladino lost, but Paul LePage won. He is a governor of a state that's one of the United States. How does the rest of the Republican Party deal with this part of who they are now? They deal with it awkwardly. Because after the little beards thing and after telling the NAACP to kiss him on his butt and all the rest of that stuff, but before the Vaseline rape stuff, genteel Republican presidential hopeful Jeb Bush had already committed to doing a Paul LePage re-election fundraiser. Jeb Bush is in the awkward part of running for president now where you put out your book denouncing all your old positions. In his case, it was his book denouncing his own ideas about immigration reform, which came out right at the exact same time when his party was embracing those ideas. Jeb Bush has since said that he likes immigration reform because immigrants are so fertile. So that's his new try. Jeb Bush is at the part of trying to run for president now where he tries to punch every other elected Republican's dance card all over the country in the hope that they will punch his dance card back and support him once the primaries start. And Mr. Bush does have connections to Maine, the whole Kennebunkport thing, right? So he's doing this stuff. And he said he would do a thing for Paula Page. And then Paula Page said the thing about bending people over and doing them without Vaseline. And then when the biggest papers in the state did their big expose about his cabinet, he responded by trying to stop the biggest papers in the state from covering state government at all, issuing a blanket, indefinite, no comment on all matters to three of the largest papers in the state. And then in response to all the controversy, Paula Page said today, ah, yeah, I think I'll run for Congress. Why not? I'd be perfect. In fact, his exact quote was, it can't be any worse in Washington than it is here. Here meaning Maine, where he is governor, where he thinks it is terrible. How is Jeb Bush going to squirrel out of this? Jeb Bush has to squirrel out of this, doesn't he? How does he escape this?